Hey guys, it's been a while. Um, I have a mini kiln opening. Uh, it's taken quite a bit because I took my time, as you can see, and I've been gardening and life is just busy. But let's get right to it because this is a really great kiln unloading and I'm super, super excited about it. Um, so check these out. Okay, so this one is on BMix. And look at the bottom. I'll grind that off. But I took some stroke and coat colors and watered it down to fill in like the texture and then wiped it back. And I really like how that came out. Um, so this mug had obsidian at the bottom only and then obsidian on the handle only then at the top here it is black aventurine and i did stripes in uh, of the body from like from where the obsidian uh, ended right here and the black aventurine so in between i did stripes of stroke and coat hot tamale ruby slippers and then sangria and kimchi which are spectrum glazes so you can see the Spectrum um, kimchi at the bottom underneath the sangria. And again, the, the kimchi was at the top. So, and in between were stripes of those different colors. I think that is so cool. I was really curious how the kimchi would react with the black aventurine. And that's what it does because it was just kimchi at the top, that one stripe hitting the black aventurine. Very cool. The inside, I have no idea. It turned like blue almost. And I did, I thought I did black aventurine only in there, but maybe I, I don't know. Maybe I added something, but um, so there's that one. Okay this here was a reglaze it was like this ugly bowl on one of my last kiln openings uh, I'll see if I can put a picture of it like before I post the video um, but I went over it I did a bunch of reglazes in here and I went over this one with what do you guess what what do you think pearl white all over and then I went over it again with winter wood one time. And then the rim I did in flux. This was like super ugly bowl. It did craze on the inside, but whatever. I'll use it for something. Um, the original was, uh, I think, some kind of red stroke and coat dot and some tan uh, color I had never used before. Um, I forget what it was, but I can let you know if you're curious. But this is just a reglaze. You'll never get the same reglaze, you know, um, or the same exact combo on a reglaze because it's a reglaze and that they're one of a kind. So anyway, that's that. Very cool. I hope you can see these. Let's see. Much better. Okay. Now, oh, so I don't know what to show you first, but I've been doing um, Cricut. I have a Cricut and I print out these like stencils. And <clears throat> these are just testers. I had some extra uh, colored clay 
So I whipped up some Cricut designs, printed it out on a vinyl adhesive, and then uh, underglazed them in black velvet underglaze, and then just put clear glaze on top. So pretty interesting. Um, I do have videos in the making of how to do the Cricut and um, that'll, that'll be coming soon. So that's a um, light blue and like it's supposed to be a red, supposed to be a red um, colored clay, but and it's be mixed. Oh, and the inside is just pearl white. Look how pretty pearl white is on its own on uh, be mix. Here's the other one. This one kind of bled a little bit, so <clears throat> lesson learned. I think I went like too heavy. Um, on the clear over the underglaze and it kind of smeared that uh, <clears throat> that design but that's okay these were testers just using up the colored clay and then I did uh, pearl white again on the inside I keep tapping the screen to see if you can if it'll focus and it did all right, um, there's that. Check these out. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous. I love the way these came out. Don't mind my dirty hands from being in the garden, um, but take a quick look. Wow. This was another experiment. Um, what I did here was snow just to here at the bottom because I was nervous that these would run and the snow will stop the running usually. Um, so what is on me? Probably dirt. Um, but anyway, so I have the snow here and then this is um flux blossom i haven't used that yet so i did flux blossom and then above that i did a big stripe three times of blue rutile and then above that i did a stripe of sangria and then above that, I did a stripe of kimchi. And the same thing on the inside. Really beautiful. It did kind of bubble and pinhole, which is weird. I don't know why, but... I don't, I don't mind because I love them so much. And again, this load was really just testing, testing glazes. Okay. All right, so that's that. Then I have, oh, look at this. So this was another Cricut, um, vinyl cutout decal thing that I printed out on the Cricut. Again, a test. I did this one, the fern, and then another fern. And then, so I put it on, painted, um, glazed it with the snow three times and then peeled it off. Did not come off that easily. It wasn't as glorious as it sounds, but I really like that a lot. You know, it's just simple, crisp, clean. And the clay is the uh, speckled buff. There's that. Um, 
So RJM Pottery, shout out to you because I tried her glaze combo on these, which is Honey Flux. And then over the Honey Flux was Textured Turquoise. And then on the rim was Ancient Jasper. I love that. Thank you, RJM. Really beautiful combo. So I did that on that one. And then this little tiny bud vase that was like a flopped pot that I turned into a bud vase. Delicious. Right? I like it. Okay. Um, this is another one. <clears throat> Same combo on a different form that's more straight. It doesn't have many curves at all. See how when you have a curvier piece, it like, it doesn't go to the bottom as much because it goes around the curve rather than just straight down. The teacher in me like had to point that out, sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. Wow, look at the inside. That's so pretty. Okay. Um, what else? Oh. Want to see something really cool? Check it out. That makes me smile. For real. I love it. So, okay. Um, granted, I think I got some wax on that because see the bare spot? That's okay. I can refire if I want to. Um, again, this was a Cricut mandala. Uh, that took 10 years to figure out how to get it off, but there's a video for that. I figured it out. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I got the design from the Cricut. Then I did the lines in a satin black, uh, on a matte black by Amico. And then in between the lines is Gunmetal Green by uh, Coyote. How gorgeous. And then this was, <clears throat> the rim was just the black, that matte black. Again, just a tester. That breeze feels so nice. It is so hot here. So let's go up again, up close. How gorgeous. I'm kind of obsessed with this. It was worth the effort, but I'll find a way to like make it better, like easier and quicker. So this is probably my favorite piece out of this kiln. Um, <clears throat> I refired this plate. I don't know if you guys have watched the video on how to make this like artsy glazed plate, but it had a ton of pinholes. Um, so I just put it back in the kiln because sometimes that will get rid of the pinholes. And it did get rid of some of them, but not all of them. So that's fine. And then I um, refired another plate that was just pearl white that um, had so many pinholes and it cracked. Let me get it for you. It cracked in half. <laughs> I'm okay with that because again, it's just an experiment. But see how the, um, 
the pinhole, this was really badly pinholed. And it's not as bad anymore. So sometimes it does like get rid of them completely. Like it did a good job. <clears throat> it just broke because I probably didn't use what I, the uh, uh, Michelle Dickey. I bought it. She told me what to use and I didn't use it. The, uh, it's the grog that on bigger pieces you can put it on the kiln shelf and it'll allow movement during the firing. So this doesn't happen. Hmm. So next time I will take your advice, Michelle, and use, use it. I think it's alumina hydrate, I think. This was um, also a reglaze because it had those pinholes. My last firing, my kiln got way too hot um, and things overfired and I had a lot of pinholes. But this one came out good on the refire. And this was um, stroke and coat in the center of Moody Blue. Until next time, just that in the center on the raw clay. And then I went over it and you know what it is. I went <laughs> pearl white uh, three times. But look at the refire on the pearl white. It turned almost like a uh, yellow the second time around. I find that interesting. Regardless, I'm glad that this came out with no pinholes because that's a really cute, uh, you know, spoon rest. Um, okay. Oh, there's a spider. Uh, another reglaze here. This was originally uh, moody blue by uh, a stroke and coat, Moody Blue. And then I had Pearl White, <clears throat> but whatever happened in that last kiln um, firing, it, it, it crawled, it like, it was awful. This piece was like ruined. Um, I think it was because of the heat. And so I, I smothered it in like three coats of Honey Flux and it totally fixed it and made it amazing. I'll have to like show you the like before and afters because it's really amazing what a reglaze can do. You know, you might as well try. So this is now it's like fully functioning mug and it came out amazing, I think. Yep, and so this one as well was a um, reglaze um, and it, it just, it came out better. You know, this had a weird drip and it was bothering me. Um, and I, I had a feeling it was gonna run off the shelf, but it didn't. It still has weird drips, like it's okay. I think it's because of the shape of the handle at the bottom. But nonetheless, um, I like the way the glaze came out. This was originally, um, what was it? Pearl white. This was originally pearl white, power turquoise, and cobalt. Um, and then the, the second firing, the reglaze, I did um, three times of honey flux all over. It's pretty interesting on the inside. Really interesting. It's almost like, it almost looks like crystals in a way. Look at that. Can you see that? Wow. Okay. So there's that. Um, oh, you're going to, oops, sorry. You're going to like these. Oh my gosh. Um, 
<clears throat> this, I did this combo on the speckled buff in one of my last um, firings, kiln openings. They had the, they were the jumbo mugs. There were three of them with the same combination. And they're a lot brighter. This combo is a lot brighter. This is, um, all, these are two spectrum glazes. So it's two times of holly green. And then over that is two times of textured kiwi fruit. Definitely have some grinding to do. But that's a really pretty, really pretty green. I can't take credit for it. Um, one of my best friends, Zahava, she's like a master potter. She's amazing. But anyway, she uses this combo a lot um, with her scrapito pieces. You can find her on Instagram too at Inner Light Pottery. Inner Light Pottery, yes. But anyway, I really like that color. Okay, and then this was the the second the second one. But look at the inside. Okay. So that um Okay, so these are I've, I have a video on these, on this like step-by-step, -step. it's a long form video on this exact combination. Um, comes out the same every time. And it did run, so I do have a lot of grinding to do, but. This is the three times of the Chun Plum Amico. And then over that is the three times seaweed amico and then a heavy rim of oatmeal and black aventurine it feels so good in the hand i really love like the the little dimple. I keep having to tap the screen for it to focus. <clears throat> Look at that. Those striations are so pretty. And all my cones, like, I think I figured out my kiln. So they all came out around a six, six and a half. Um, and I'm really happy with that because that was pretty much the targeted temp. Um, so I have a friend whose dog passed away, um, like, last year. And I'm, I just got around to finishing these. So we got his paw print. And I made a bunch of plaques. I have four of them. So these, I did another experiment with. His name was Opie. And what I did was I leaned, I've never done this before, but I leaned these two plaques, and I can hang string in them, but I leaned them against the kiln shelf uh, the, the kiln wall because I wanted it to drip because if you lay it flat, it's not going to, it's just not going to move at all. Not at all, really. So I wanted some movement. So I, in the shelf, um, I just put this at an angle at the bottom here. I didn't want this part to touch the shelf because it has glaze, the top part. So right here, I had that leaning that sitting right there on the shelf and then leaning back against the wall to about here so 
you see it, it moved some like I didn't want it to be so straight that it would just run off so I thought that was really cool I was worried I've never done that before and I wasn't sure what would happen but um regardless you can see his paw prints And this is honey flux. Um, I first did on the raw clay where he wrote his name Opie. I put the moody blue and I just used a paintbrush and went like thin in some areas. I put it, I put it specifically like in certain spots and then went over the whole thing with honey flux. That, that came out pretty decent. I was worried about it. Um, he's going to be so excited. The family's going to be so excited, but check out this one. This one, uh, I, I did manganese wash. Um, this one I did manganese wash in the little like nails of the paw. And that's a Mako manganese wash. And then and then also like under, underneath and in the opie up here, I did that uh, moody blue and I went like light in some areas and heavy in some areas and then smothered it all in three times with honey flux. Okay, so I think that came out really good and I think they're gonna be happy. They wanted something blue. Um, again, I have trouble glazing like uh, flat pieces because like I said, they don't move much. And you know me how I like glazes to move. So, so as a backup plan, I made two more. I made four in total and what I did on this one was just black underglaze wiped back and uh, I went over it with Celadon Sky three times from Amico and I I haven't used designer liner yet oh no sorry this one doesn't have designer liner but the other one does this was just the underglaze and the um, sky but I, I bought designer liner from Mako. I've never used that before. And I tried it on this one. So the, on this one, um, we made, sorry, we made uh, two for Opie and two for Brutus. So Opie, uh, one of them has passed and one of them has not, but he's, he's old. So we got them both. So for Brutus, <laughs> um, I did Celadon Cobalt in the paws wiped back went over it with sky celadon three times and then i went over it with this designer liner this black designer liner i did the brutus and the date in that and it kind of bubbled the uh, designer liner maybe i went too thick i've never used it before um I, I don't mind that it bubbled. It's not bad, but you know what? I actually like this. You can see the paws really well. Um, I should have made, actually, I did make one from, we lost our maxi. Um, it's another thing, like I haven't been around. It's just been crazy. We lost two dogs this year, like one from um, cancer randomly, like, uh, just lymphoma he and he was four he passed away at four um it happened fast he got sick it was awful and then like a few months later we lost another one our oldest so um i do have a plaque made for for maxi the most recent one um so anyway it's just been a lot you know oops sorry um but yeah so uh, that'll be in my next kiln unloading, um, uh, Maxi's, you know, Maxi's plaque. 
so there's that. Uh, I, okay, the last few things I have on this little mini kiln opening is another test of... Um, so this is speckled buff with... <clears throat> with colored clay mixed in. Um, I try, so I did the, another Cricut design there. And then on this one, I did a clear, shiny clear over it. I use a uh, speed ball, speed ball clear. There's nothing really to write home about here. I just wanted to see what the difference would be between the shiny clear and the matte clear, which mats are tough, uh, the clears, because they leave a residue. And it's like, I, I'm yet to find a clear that's like clear as a matte finish. If anyone has suggestions, I'd love to know. Um, so, but on this one, I did that matte which is pretty decent, but you know what I did? I literally did like one coat, like the, the thinnest coat you can imagine. And then I went, I took my finger and like a little like brush and like kind of got some more of it off just to have like the thinnest one layer. It, it, you know, that kind of worked out nice. Um, yeah, that's what I did there. And the inside was a shiny, clear, glossy, clear. Just so you could, you know, see the uh, colored clay better. So those are like the Cricut things. Interesting. And then um, there was that last piece in the back. This last one here is a reglaze. The original uh, glaze was the uh, matte white, matte white on speckled buff. And I didn't put enough coats the last time. And this time I, I added another couple of coats and that's how it came out. I really do actually like this. The feel is so soft and nice. So <clears throat> it's basically snow, but it's like matte. Right? So it just depends on the, like, the look you're going for. This was a flopped pot anyway. So I just made it like through some stamps. I don't know. I was playing around. And hey, why not? Figured I'd fire it and use it as a test piece. A little, little tea mug. So that's it, guys. Um, let me know what you think and what were your favorite pieces. And um, I'll see you next time. Miss you so much. I will um, be posting again hopefully soon. All right. Talk soon. Bye, guys.